Welcome back guys. Welcome back. So I've been working on the polo for a little bit this morning and haven't filmed anything because I woke up this morning uh, feeling the pressure. Yeah, I'm kind of entering that, that nebulous. I'm kind of surpassing the threshold of realizing that every moment counts on this car because in under a week I need it in my trailer. And the fact that I've been trying to get a video a day up. I haven't really been trying to do that. I've just been filming everything I've been doing and knew that if I didn't get those videos up the day that I was filming them, they would just get backlogged and they'd get lost. I just, I wouldn't finish them or get them up. Uh, I've been working on the management. I had to get some longer bolts, as you guys saw in the last video. I got some longer hardware for the compressor. I'm gonna get the manifold mounted. Uh, leader line is plumbed in, sealed, everything's good to go. After lunch, I'm gonna start notching. I'm actually gonna do some cutting uh, on this thing today. Gonna get the lower control arm notched and I'm gonna get my axles in. Gonna get axles in and get, um, yeah, some things sorted out. I can't bolt things in for a test drive until Monday when the lock rings show up, as I mentioned in the last episode as well, um, so I can tighten everything up to drive it. All right, I'm gonna start notching uh, for the lower control arm and possibly the axle. I'm not gonna go too much. I'm not gonna get up into the frame rail. I'm just gonna take this big ear right here off. You can see where the control arm's already been hitting uh, just on some test fits. So it's a, quite a big ear that just hangs down. So it's gonna be easy to just kind of chop that off. Tight fitting on 15s may not require a driver's side axle notch. We'll, we'll see. Um, after I get these notched, I'm gonna get the axles in. I'm gonna do the notching first because it's just one less thing, like if the axle's in there, it's just gonna be harder to work around it. I got the lower control arms, uh, range of motion back, got some notches made in here. Uh, super simple. I mean, this, this couldn't have been easier for the lower control arm simply because it's just an ear of this inner fender, this metal piece that slides down. So there was no like restructuring needed. It's not like I had to notch the frame rail and have to like actually weld an, uh, you know, like a pipe notch in or something. All right, I got the passenger side axle in. I didn't film any of it because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I just want to get stuff done. So once I got the driver's side axle in, just by looking at what type of range of motion this is gonna have airing down, I knew that I was more than likely gonna have to notch uh, for the driver's side axle. So I pulled the axle back out and just went ahead and did that. So this plastic guard here actually came out quite a ways and came straight down. So what I did was I, I, well, keeping it in the car, I pulled it down here and just, and cut it back and contoured it around that, that upper pin that mounts it. So that'll give the axle a bit more range of motion to go up. And uh, I didn't touch the frame rail though. I just cut the ear back and then this has been notched for the control arm. So both of these have gone up quite a ways. And like I said, I didn't really want to mess with the frame rail right now if I don't have to. I don't have my welder set up here and uh with 15s sitting on top of the the lip i don't think i'll have to go that far all right welcome back it's the next day it is mother's day so happy mother's day to all you mothers out there i honestly i didn't film much of anything that i did last night to be honest i'm just a little burnt on this whole youtube thing uh if you've been following the series you know i've been getting a video up like every day all the while trying to put this thing together alone. And um, it's just been kind of wearing on me. Now there's only really about five days until I want this thing in the trailer, uh, ready to go to Helen, Georgia for Alpine Volksfair. So last night I worked on a lot of the management, just getting things wired in and whatnot. I gotta take the rear seat out to hide some more of the wiring. I'm gonna wire the compressor in today and hide connections and all that under the seat. Uh, get all my airlines trimmed and plugged into the manifold. 
And what I'm doing right now is I'm working on some maintenance. I went and got some vacuum line. There's some, the car didn't really want to run when I first bought it. And as I've mentioned before, I haven't even been down the road in the car. I drove it on my trailer and off my trailer into here. And it was having a hard time idling. Uh, it sounded like it had a, a massive vacuum leak somewhere. So upon looking at what's going on under the hood, there were a couple 10 millimeter vacuum lines that were kinked. Um, I haven't gotten a full look underneath the air bonnet yet. I'm in the process of taking that off. I've got some 10 millimeter vacuum line. I'm gonna fix this line. So I'm going through and, and kind of tidying that up. I'm hoping that'll bring the idle out, uh, the, the rough idle out. Um, it hadn't run for quite a while before I bought it anyway. So it might be a combination of a few different things. I've got a new fuel filter I got to put in it. When I bought it, it was pretty low. It was like right on empty. So I did put new fuel in it. So it just needs to run more to get that into the system. Yeah, kind of just tidying up a few things on this Sunday. Spent the morning with my family. Took my mom out to breakfast and had lunch with my folks and my grandmother. So that was, uh, that was nice. I'm waiting on those lock rings to show up tomorrow. And that's when I can finally start assembling the suspension to get it down on the wheels and uh, figure out what else needs to be done. And then I can start modifying my fenders to get the fitment just right. Oh, we're getting close. Oh, not enough time. <laughs> Ordered an air filter as well. This one's probably okay, but I mentioned a few episodes ago that these are different than the Mark One Rabbit air filters uh, that we got here in America, and probably the same as the Mark One Golfs in Europe. But those took like a box filter, like a square, square filter. And these are obviously round. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the video there. I, to be honest, I wasn't even gonna try to uh, squeeze a video out of the last couple of days. I didn't want to make it seem like I was reaching deep to just keep posting videos. But as I mentioned before, I'm kind of just posting videos as I'm in the shop, even if it's thought process and stuff. I just wanted to kind of get this whole project, if not out on paper, out on this. So it's Sunday night. I've gotten most of the management all done. Well, I sh yeah, the management's done, except for the controller mount, which I just spent some time revisiting because with the time allowed, I was just gonna put the controller in like a cubby in the center console and just have it like in your lap while you're driving, which is fine. But you look back a couple episodes and you'll see that I, I posted almost a whole episode on just the custom controller that I designed and laser cut out of acrylic. Uh, so I revisited that just now and kind of have a plan in play. I'm gonna do my stud conversion. Then I need to test fit the wheels one more time now that I've got everything notched up front make sure I've got the height I need, and then start messing with my fenders for uh, detailed fitment of the wheels. Bumper should be in in a couple days. Steve's working hard on those. Huge shout out to my friend Steve for taking the bumpers back and hammering away on those uh, as far as getting paint. Then you'll have some touch-up paint to get this big scrape at least hidden a little bit. The crunch time is real now. Crunch time is real. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for the support. I can't tell you how much it means. I mean, even just the uh, supportive comments. I can't wait to see you guys in Helen. Uh, it's gonna be a photo finish here. I've got a lot of work to do as well. I'm making 50 of the Ludwig's Garage and Alpine Volksfair key rings, which are gonna be similar to the Governor's Club Ocean City key rings that I do. I'm not vending the show. So basically throughout the week that I'll be there or the long weekend, I'll be posting locations to where I'm hanging out and you guys can get out to wherever I am to get a key ring. So it's gonna be like a grassroots scavenger hunt type thing as, as the Ocean City key rings have become over the years. So 50, that's all I'm making. Uh, I posted a couple previews a few episodes back, but in the next episode, I'll have a few on me just so I can show you guys here on this channel. But if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen them already. I'll continue hyping those up as we get closer to the weekend. And I just made the Alpine Books for Awards got the wagon meat key rings done for those guys and i've got to make some key rings for the mark four meat uh for my good friend swoops 
That's coming up this upcoming week. So there's a lot of commission work to get done on top of all this stuff. And it's going to be, yeah, like I said, a photo finish. So thanks so much for watching, guys. See you in the next episode.